Good evening, everyone. I pray that you're doing well. I want to welcome you to day three in the last and final day of Write With Us workshop. I'm so excited again to have you and be able to be with you. Uh, we're going to have a really great time tonight. We're going to be discussing uh, more of an interactive discussion and perhaps if um, we have the time, we're going to get to interview some people um, and perhaps bring more of a live demonstration of the coaching program that we're offering. I do want to remind you, if you've not registered yet, to just be a part of that. I'm going to attach the links in the descriptions. We've had many people who've registered um, in the last <clears throat> uh, 24 hours that are joining little by little. And so we're, we're excited that we're going to be able to be with you and just really take on just a group of people who are going to be able to understand um, just more about their experiences tonight. I believe it's important. Um, I want you to just hit the like button for me, whether you're watching via uh, Facebook or uh, YouTube. I haven't heard of too many rumors about what happens if you like them tonight, but maybe we'll hear some about some tonight later on. Uh, but I do want to encourage you uh, to just really take a lot of notes over the last of this session. We're going to be giving you a lot of information and details about not just publishing, but even just turning your book into a conference, turning your book into a seven to six figure business. If there are really so many things that a one book can open up, whether it's eBooks, workbooks, um, any type of genre that you can really just grow and develop yourself into. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I do want to uh, welcome all of the members of Impact University, the current members of the Fivefold Academy, and all of the other members from Crusaders Church and the different ways that you get in touch with us. So um, if you're new, please let me know in the comments. I want to know um, who you are, where you're from. Uh, let me know what you've been. Uh, well, let us know what also what you're writing about. What is your book about? Give us just a general description. It doesn't have to be long, but we do want to know. So if you can type that in the comments, that'd be such a great help for us to understand uh, what who we are talking to and what we're talking about. So we're excited <clears throat> about this. I'm going to bring on. Uh, Marcos tonight, we're going to be having more of a discussion about the publishing industry and some of his experiences. Hey, Marcos. Hey, guys. How are you? you I'm good, sir. How are you? Good. It's good to see you. I know we talked briefly earlier, and we're excited about tonight and everything that's going to um, happen um, and uh, everything that's going to take place. I guess my audio was acting up. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, a little bit. It's all good. <laughs> okay, I just saw it. Thanks a lot. Um, but we're excited about uh, tonight's discussion. Um, really, um, a lot of uh, what we have heard throughout the last couple of days, it seems like there is a pain point in discussing about just perhaps understanding who you're writing your book to. Who is who is this specific person or this almost mystical idea of who that individual is? And one of the things that I loved, Marcos, that you discussed in the from idea to bestseller e-course is really targeting your avatar, your reader avatar, your avatar reader. Um, yeah. I'm not sure which verbiage you use, but how most people, they write their book to a either nation or group of people. Uh, they write it to a general uh, population, but they never really narrow it down to a specific person who's got a specific pain and how they're going to go from that pain to a promise and that journey of being blessed by the fruits of their labor and that what they personally experience or even just the revelation that God um, gave them. So I think that those are some of the valuable things that perhaps you can expand on um, and just give us some more of, of that tonight. I'm going to be pushing you forward into the full screen, but I'll still be here listening. So I'll be back and forth. Yeah. So um, really, when you think about um, your your target reader, uh, some refer to it as a target reader. Some say target audience. Some say reader avatar, which I think is what you were referring to just a minute ago. And I've also heard the term reader persona. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can refer to this, but really it's it's um, the general sense, like it's just in a marketing language is your target audience. And um the problem, though, with saying target audience when you're writing a book is that if you think of it as an audience, if you think about it as a group of people, uh, which is really hard not to think about it that way when you're a preacher, especially, or if you uh, are in ministry, you're used to, you know, speaking to uh, large amounts of people at the, at, you know, at one time. And so when you even when you think about a social media platform like this, you know, we're speaking to uh, a large amount of people. But 
I think the greatest, one of the greatest mistakes that you can make as a writer is to speak the way that you preach, uh, or rather, let me say this again, is to write the way that you preach or to write the way that you um, uh, might speak to a large audience. The, it, there really has to be a nuance that's different there because it's the difference of you speaking to a room full of people versus speaking to someone one-on-one -on -one, you know, over a cup of coffee. Um, you don't speak the same way to a large group of people the way you speak to your close friend who's sitting across to you, uh, you know, from you at a table, like I said, having a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever. Um, you just don't speak the same way. Uh, and there's a very authentic way that that conversation comes across. And so, um, so, so really, as you start thinking about who you're writing to, you also have to start thinking about that audience really as an individual. Because if you start thinking about them as an individual, it will actually impact the way that you write. Um, and so if you are in the process of writing right now, or if it's something that you've been doing, um, go back and reread some of the things that you say. If you say things like, we must pursue this, we must follow Christ, we must go after, you know, oh, the church has to, you know, or, uh, you know, women need to, men need to. This generation needs to. If you start speaking in these sort of macro terms, the reader feels like they're in a room full of other people. Um, but when you say you need to, when you say I need to, when you say let's go on this journey together, you know, when you start speaking um, and just changing your language a little bit in your writing from speaking to a large audience to speaking to an individual really impacts uh, the way that you write. It makes it a lot more effective. But that still doesn't get to your target audience or your reader persona. And so one of the things that uh, we oftentimes will do is we'll walk people through an exercise. You know, we'll walk some of our clients. You know, I've worked with authors on this. Uh, and it's funny how they, they think that they are, oh, this book is for everyone. This book is for, you know, um, women or this book is for men or this book is for anybody who's between the ages of so-and-so and so-and-so and so. or you know they may not really give it a whole lot more thought than that than just to kind of put a cluster of demographics together almost as you know as if you're talking about this large swath of people and they actually have it twisted i think because a lot of times you might actually think that it's counterintuitive or counterproductive to think about who you're reaching in terms of an individual you might think man i need to reach the widest audience possible I need to make this as applicable as possible to as many people as possible, because isn't that what's going to get it, you know, the message out to the most people? Not necessarily. In fact, I would argue that it won't, uh, because if you if you aim for everyone, you're actually going to hit no one. If you aim for a large group of people, uh, it's going to your writing is going to feel that way. You're, you're not going to be thinking about the person that you're writing to. And so and so one of the reasons why they call it a target audience is because you actually need to hone that in to a target, right? And so I would actually encourage you to hone within the bullseye, hone it down to, you know, a, a, a pin sized, you know, target that you're going after. And the way you do that is by identifying your reader avatar, your individual, your reader persona. It's, a, it's actually a person. So rather than just saying that your writing is to a large audience of people between this age and this age, is your writing aimed at a man or is it aimed at a woman? Because you will write, whether you like it or not, your writing is going to feel masculine or it's going to feel feminine. It'll, it'll feel like you're aiming towards one or the other. Um, or it'll either feel that way or it'll feel out of focus um, because you haven't thought about that. So, so you need to be thinking about who you're aiming it to. Now, if you, you don't want to alienate certain audiences, right? So, um, so you don't want to make it sound so feminine that now if it's a book that you want men to read, you know, you don't want to be talking, uh, with, with a lot of feminine language, uh, throughout the manuscript. Uh, but if it's something that you want, um, you know, to have wide appeal, but you want it to skew in a certain direction, then you're going to have a certain tone, a certain language in how you speak. And so, um, so as you start to think about who that, um, target reader is, you, you want to identify an age range, you know? And as you identify that age range, start thinking about people that you know uh, and what they look like. What do they enjoy? What are the kinds of things that they prefer? You know, what are the types of books that they read? Who are the communicators that they follow? Who are the authors that they follow? Um, what are the kind of problems that they have? 
you know, and what kind of, what, what sort of struggles are they dealing with in life? What are their pain points? And then I would even take it a step further. And as you start thinking of who that target audience is, start reaching out to some people who fit that category and invite them for a cup of coffee and start asking them questions about the kind of things that you're writing and saying, Hey, does this appeal to you? Do you think this, do you think this would, would this solve a problem for you? If, if you read a message, would you even be interested in something like this? And as you start to ask those kind of questions, you'll start to get other ideas. You'll start to get some feedback and you'll start to understand from their perspective. Oh, okay. So I'm actually focusing on this, but they, they would actually be more interested if I focused on that. And you start to kind of unpack this whole strategy around this person that you're writing towards. And I've gone so far as to say, Hey, you know, go to Google and type in a description of, of a person. And, uh, you know, you can even do that with AI now and, um, and type in a description of a person and actually have a picture drawn up of who that person is, what they look like, uh, give them a name, you know, write to Stacy, write to, you know, um, uh, Samantha, whatever their name is, write to George, you know, put their, um, put their image up on a wall. And as you're writing, speak to them, you know, and actually make your writing, uh, you know, uh, aimed at, at, at them and write to an individual. It will do wonders to your writing if you start to think about uh, what you're doing and what you're saying and how you're writing a manuscript. If you start thinking about it in terms of this is for that person, because the more you target it to them, here's the reality. The more you target it to them, as people start to read the book, they may not fall in the demographic of that individual, but you've made it so personal as you've written to them. I never knew who you were going after when you wrote that book. But I was interested in the topic, so I read it, right? But now, because you wrote it to that individual, now when I'm reading it and I'm outside of this demographic, man, I feel like you're speaking to me because you're speaking to an individual. You know, so you're so by default, what ends up happening is that it ends up crafting your narrative and your manuscript in, in a more individual sense, makes it more authentic. Now you're going from the room to the coffee table in the way that you're writing. And so now when I pick it up and I start reading it, even if I'm not in that demographic, like I said, it feels like you're talking to me because you're speaking to an individual. You are talking to readers that choose to read this, this material. And so now as I start reading, I feel like you're speaking to me and now I'm more engaged. Now I get further along in the book. I think we mentioned this in the course, but do you know that the average reader does not get past, I think it's page nine in a book. They don't get past the first dozen pages of a book most people start them they stop around there they put it down just didn't draw their attention didn't grab them they just decided not to continue but there are certain books that you start reading them you're like man i can't put this down you know and part of the reason why is because the author understands the power of speaking to that individual they wrote in a way that engaged you so really study those kinds of books that appeal to you that way. Ask other people, you know, what are the kind of books that appeal to you? Why do they appeal to you? Why is it that, you know, they, uh, they engage you the way they do? What is it you like about that? And just start learning about that. Does that make sense what I'm saying so far? Yeah, I think what you said is so valuable. You know, I have a friend of mine, <clears throat> actually, she works with us in Impact. And a couple of years ago, she had written a book um, specifically for people who wanted to take better care of their tulips. And she sold that book for the first five or 10 years of her career, but she made over $250,000 because she had defined, hey, people don't know how to take care of their tulips. And she basically was an expert at how to do it. She knew yeah. the process to maintain them alive for an extended amount of time. And she started literally just put, putting outs there, going on groups on Facebook, going on different uh, talk shows and or making YouTube videos, I think is what it was. And all of a sudden, she hit a target audience that was defined on how can I keep my tulips alive for an extended amount of time, which led to thousands of copies of her book selling, which is something that you would not even think. I was even having this conversation <clears throat> this afternoon with a friend of mine who uh, we have somebody who we know who her, I guess, workbook is now um, really selling fast because she is made of entire Instagram page for moms at home who want to still cook at home, but it has to be an easy meal. 
and now she sees sold thousands of books. Her Instagram went from um, I think I was with her when she was at five thousand. Now she has over one hundred and eighty thousand followers. But she's consistently putting out content and giving the value of her experience, and basically has developed an authority in that area of the mom journey. That hey, I'm a stay-at-home mom, but cooking is really difficult. But I have some meals that can help you get better. I can help you make them fast while your little ones are running around or something. This will take you five minutes, and so that now that whole entire experience becomes yeah. so fast. Let me uh, let me actually interrupt you there real quick too because. Um it's really important for everybody to know this too, when it comes to uh, identifying your target reader and, and just thinking about your manuscript and how it'll engage uh, a reader. The unfortunate reality of our human condition is that we're very selfish people. And yes. we tend to be, and we tend to be self-absorbed. You know, we, we want to, we want to try to, um, you know, pray against those things and we want to, you know, cast every, thing out right that that uh that that kind of makes us the selfish and self-absorbed kind of people that we are but it it does tend to be the general nature of uh individuals and so if i'm going to take the time to pick up a book and to read it um i really don't care a whole lot about that author right like if i'm a reader like the main reason i'm reading this book is because i want to know how is this book going to help me you know sure. how is this book going to help me to get through whatever it is that i'm going through how is it going to impact me? How is it going to benefit me? And so a lot of times authors tend to get self-absorbed in their journey, in their yep. testimony, in their story. They want to tell their whole life story about how they were born, how they were raised, everything that they went through, their whole journey, their whole pain, you know, all of this stuff, all their suffering. And they want to tell this good news about how they've come through this or whatever that other the side of the, uh, the story right. is. Right. But but it's like they feel like this whole book is about them. And mm. you've got to understand very clearly that the book is actually not about you. Even if it's about your story, the book is actually about how is your story going to impact them? How is your story going to help them? What is it that they can draw out of, out of the story of your, uh, whatever it is that you're writing about to help them? That's really what the book is about. And that's right. really what the reader cares about. So when we think about the target reader, when we think about um, writing to that individual, we can't, you know, it's like going back to the example that I gave when you're on, when you're having that cup of coffee with a friend, if I go have a cup of coffee with a friend and they spend an hour with me and all they do is talk the whole time and they're just talk, talk, talk. And then I try to get a word in and then they turn it back to them and keep talking, talking, talking. Like if they don't show any interest right. in my life or in my situation, or what I'm going through, I'll be exhausted by the end of that hour. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so in that, so in that same way, we have to demonstrate, you know, sort of this empathy as an author to go, man, how's this whole thing going to help them? And what's it going to do sure. for them and turn the manuscript towards them as fast as we can. Now, with that in mind, um, now, before we continue, guys, please continue to just like and engage in the comments. It really helps us. Again, the rumor is back from last night that Marcus is just going to prophesy over everybody <laughs> by the end of the night. So it's definitely something you want to do. Um, but with that in mind, I know that especially when it comes to um, Christian authors or just in this specific um, group of people, a lot of times, oftentimes, people want to write about their story. A lot of people, perhaps they don't have a message that they have um, yet arrived to and they're trying to cycle through that. Yeah. Um, how do you know how much to share? Because let's, let's say that, um, let's t say for me, okay, I have a horrible history with my father and a really just tough relationship. I was, let's say, this is of course, utopian world. I was abused. I was um, just completely um, misused. How do I know what moments to share and what moments to not share? Because I even think that in terms of the people are wired for stories and they do like to hear the stories, but at the same time, how do you define that balance? Well, notice I didn't say don't share your story, right? Like your story, the power of your testimony is, I mean, they overcame. <laughs> right. By the blood of the lamb and the power of their testimony. So <clears throat> your your testimony, your story is is essential. Like, you know, I would still encourage you to um, prayerfully and authentically share as much as you're comfortable sharing of your story in these things. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer for that. If, sure. if you're not comfortable sharing something, don't share it. If you're comfortable, I think that's great. It's really, though, about how do I get what I'm sharing? How do I get the, the story that I'm that I'm 
you know, we're obviously sharing this for a reason, right? And we're telling our story for a reason, but how do I turn my story to their story as fast as possible? I think that's the real question is how do we, en- how do we engage the reader in this journey rather than ju- them just hearing about me? You know, maybe I pause for a moment as I'm telling my story and then I start saying a few statements about the reader and pulling them into the journey. You know, I don't right. know what you're going through, but you know, I, I, or, or I tell a different story of someone that I shared my story to, and then the impact that it had on them, you know, now I'm talking about someone else and I'm, and I'm kind of going through these efforts to try to bring the reader into the journey, as opposed to just making it all about me. Um, you're going to sure. lose most readers very quickly in a book. If you make it all about you and you're not engaging them in that process somehow. So it's really trying to figure out how do I engage that reader? How do I pull them into this journey as quickly as I can? Yeah, you know, I think it's funny because I, I, a couple of years ago, I was having someone that I was um, helping at the time with the book, and I'm not an expert, but I do know how to get some attention of people some somewhat. And this person was just fighting me on the cover because they had gotten this picture of it, and the cover essentially was almost like, um, what is that movie that has the blue people? Avatar. Avatar. Yes. It had a picture of an avatar and it was about overcoming deception. And I said, I'm sorry, but this is not going to sell very well because it's just going to distract people and confuse them with the cover. It had nothing to do with the thing. And also, I think we have to be careful sometimes with the titles of the books that it doesn't just promote pain. People are already in the pain. And so what are some creative ways of just maybe even thinking in terms of like, for example, I think this is something that you actually helped me with last year. I said, hey, I want to uh, write a book on um, on waiting. I said, the blessing of waiting or the, the – and you said, yeah, that sounds good, but uh, people are already waiting or uh, you don't want to keep them in the wait. So do something yeah. like the path between waiting and blessing or something like that. I remember yeah, yeah, you yeah. saying. But it was so true yeah. because I'm like, hey – if I'm already the work of waiting is what I wanted to call you. And I'm like, you know, people don't want to stay in the work of waiting. So that's yeah, just some okay. ways that we can define. Yeah. So like if I'm going to part with, you know, $10, $15, $20 sure. to, to read whatever message you put together, if that message sounds like more work, right. Um, if that message sounds <laughs> like more pain, if that message sounds like more depression, like, okay, I'm already, you know, I'm already struggling enough. Why am I going to pay to feel like, <laughs> I got to struggle more, you know? So, so I think the right approach on a lot of these types of concepts as you're thinking about this is really thinking about where, you know, we talked about this yesterday in terms of establishing the journey for the reader, you know, as you're thinking about your outline, as you're thinking about the journey that you want them to go through, here's where they are, here's where you want them to go. You know, here's the kind of conclusion or takeaway that I want them to have. Now what's an engaging title that I can think of that almost gives them like this hope or this promise to get to that point. Um, you know, mm-hmm. that's one way to approach title is when you start thinking about what's what's on the good side of this, what's on the promise, what's the, you know, what's the thing that's going to lift my faith up uh, and and sort of lead with that kind of a concept. Uh, so instead of focusing on the pain or on the darkness over here, you're focusing more on here. Here's the uh, you know, here here's the thing that will bring you hope. Here's the thing that will bring you faith. There's also a tactic that um that can do well when it comes to uh you know titling a book that um you know there's a sense of urgency that you can create you know um i think some people take advantage of that and they actually create some sort of a uh, like a fear-mongering kind of thing and so i'm not suggesting that like you know you see a lot of doom and gloom kind of you know end times books is a great category like it's a great example to to yeah to mention here because you see books that are literally like, you feel like, man, I got to sell everything and go make a bunker real quick because it's <laughs> freaking me out. And so this, this book's going to tell me how to do that. You know what I mean? So I'm going to buy this because it's got all the keys for me to survive the apocalypse. And so right. that's going to, so now you can freak me out into buying that book, but I don't think that's a good tactic. I don't, I don't even know that it's a godly tactic, but this is not that meeting. Um, sure. <laughs> so, so. You know, so it's really, but it's really, you know, so if there are, if there are strategies in your concept or whatever it is you're coming up with that create a sense of urgency, which I, I want to separate urgency from fear. I think highlighting urgency mm-hmm. is a good thing. You know, prayers that route demons, you know, that's not a yeah. very like positive, I mean, uplifting. Not very you know, lovely. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm not thinking it doesn't necessarily fill me with like all the feels, all the good feels. 
Uh, but it certainly gives me hope. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. So these are prayers and it can actually help me impact, you know, in spiritual warfare. Like, wow, this is interesting. Um, and, and it does create kind of a sense of urgency. So I think that's a great blend of a, of an example of a title that is both positive and also has that sort of sense of urgency. Like we we're right. about to be battle time, you know what I mean? And there's other titles like that, that we've done with apostle over the years that I think had that same sort of expression. Um, hmm. and, um, and so, yeah, I think there, that that's kind of a, it's kind of giving you both sides of it, you know, where you have sure. exa- examples that give you hope that give you, you know, faith that lift you up and other examples that create a sense of urgency. Like, wow, this, this has a very timely message in it. Um, this has a very timely word or a timely concept, something that I really should, you know, digest and think about right now, you know? And so those are great concepts to also highlight as well when you're thinking about titling and messaging and those sort of things. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I'm uh, conscious about is that there's a lot of ministers who are watching this uh, actually right now. And I think that one of the ways that is, that I've found, especially when we're doing a campaign for Apostle around any form of marketing, is that starting with the end result in mind, that if you know right. what your end picture is going to be, you can always well your, work your way back and just make something um, greater out of it. For example, uh, we've had so many books that he has done, uh, Prayers That Route Demons, and then um, uh, Desperate Prayers, Prophet's Manual. And so we know that this is something that he's already has a uh, I hate to call it that, but a market or audience for that whenever we're creating a campaign, you can always work your way back and say, hey, this is something that we had a good response. Let's do a big yeah. campaign around this and build this up. So a lot of you may be asking for ways of how you can increase even your personal revenue. How can I get more? And at the end of the day, is not just about making money, but in essence, we do need money to live. And people oftentimes have this fear of like, hey, but it's a book supposed to be something that I'm supposed to, you know, just sell. Well, you know, you're, it's costing you money to make the book. And so if you're going to do something, let's do it right. And let's think through with not marketing and publishing and thinking all this stuff. It should start at the beginning of your book. It shouldn't, you shouldn't have to wait till the end to start thinking once the book is in your hands and say, okay, what do I do now? No, start thinking and like, hey, maybe one day, I can host a workshop around this book and it can be online and I can invite people to come on and you can join our challenge and you can join this or our workshop. And then perhaps one day your book is going to be about a conference. And now you're talking about thousands of copies being sold, hundreds of people being impacted, and also your ministry is growing and being blessed. So these are some of the ways that I've seen that especially with marketing, uh, uh, not just a book, but really crafting an idea from the beginning that you know is going to create something bigger at the end. Now, me personally, <clears throat> perhaps this is something that Marcos can shed light on, is what is the, uh, a good strategy for publishing a book that you've perhaps crafted or thought or seen through some of the more popular trends that work in publishing or even just you know publishing your book and marketing it? Yeah, you know, I think this the answer to that's going to depend greatly on um, the content, the concept, you know, the author, the the platform that we're talking about. Like, you know, there's so there's a lot of different variables that that go into answering that question. Well, I think, and uh, not every book would have you know the same strategy necessarily. But I want to get you to think about a couple of things, really, as an author. So when you think about a book. Um, the book is just a manifestation of your message. It's one format of your message. There are other formats, you know, there's, there's audio books, there's eBooks. And, but again, those are all still books, right? But there's also this idea and Rodrigo is touching on it, but there's this idea of turning your book into a message that gets deployed in a lot of different ways. And so I want to encourage you to start thinking about your book really as a conduit of that message but that message still exists outside of that book and so really it's up to you as the steward of that message to determine okay what are the what are the various ways that this mer- that this message needs to live and so um depending on what your book is about and depending on you know other factors in and around uh you know your vision right there could be a podcast and in a lot of cases, there should be a podcast that is themed around that book. There should be, you know, social media content. There should be um, perhaps, you know, an event or a conference, as Rodrigo was pointing to. Maybe there's an e-course, uh, much like what we're selling here, you know, with our idea to bestseller. 
you know, there's there could be a lot of different ways that that message can take shape and 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 can move forward. And so, really, it, you need to step back and before you actually um, go through the process of investing in your book, you really need to think about that big picture and go, okay, what are all the ways that um, that we're gonna, you know, that I need to or that I'm being called to steward this message in, and it could very well be that your book. Uh, maybe it's not even intended to sell that much. You know, I can't even believe that I'm saying that, right? But listen to what I'm saying, though. It may not be that you're supposed to sell that book. What if you're supposed to give away 3,000 copies of that book? And what mm. if those 3,000 copies end up breathing a whole new life into your ministry or into your platform or into your business? You know, let's just say, for example, if you have a business and I don't know what your business might be, but let's say it's some sort of consulting for small businesses. Well, what if this book that you wrote, you know, uh, you started giving copies away to the Chamber of Commerce and to all these different people around town, and that becomes now your card. And now you've given away a thousand copies to people within a 50 mile radius. And in the next 10 months, your business just tripled. Would you say that that was worth publishing that book? I would say so. Because what it did is it positioned you as an expert in whatever it is that you were communicating, right? And so it's a great strategy in terms of just expanding your horizon, expanding your 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 you know your tent, if you will, as far as um, gaining new business, gaining new revenue, growing your ministry. If you're in ministry, you know maybe you're speaking four to six times a year right now, but because you just sent that book to 300 different churches and pastors and your net ministry network and everything else, now you just went from four to six speaking engagements to now six to 12 speaking engagements. You just doubled your speaking engagements. The honorariums that you'll receive for that have more than paid for your book project and you didn't even sell a single book. And guess what? Now you have more places where you're going to be selling your book when you go out there. So these are ways to be thinking about, um, you know, it's just a different way to be thinking about the kind of return on investment that you can see for publishing your book. And when you start thinking about it that way, it really starts to take the pressure off from my gosh, this thing has to be a bestseller or I've got to go out there and recoup, you know, X amount of thousands of dollars that I've invested in this thing. You know, you could definitely recoup that, but it doesn't necessarily have to be recouped from the book sale itself. It could be recouped in a lot of these other creative ways. And so it's really just a, a, a strategy for you to be thinking about as an author, of like, how am I going to get my message out there? How is that message going to end up turning into, you know, additional opportunities for me as an author, as a minister, as a business leader? Um, as an expert in this field, you know, again, it's, it's just, it's about getting your message out there in all these different ways so that you can see a tremendous return that doesn't necessarily have to be in book sales. And if you look at it that way, I promise you, as you start to build the strategy, as you start to grow this, the book sales will happen by default because yes. it's almost like one of those things where when you stop making it about the book sale, suddenly book sales happen. You know what I mean? When you start right. thinking about this whole strategy as a whole and expanding your horizon, expanding your expertise, expanding your, you know, your ministry network, growing um, as a result of how your, your message is being you know, transmitted and, and distributed out there, the book sales will come. It's, it, that's not even the issue. It's just about thinking about these things in different ways and, and really justifying your publishing investment in these different ways. Yeah. You know, you said something really interesting um, that I hadn't thought about in terms of publishing a book or marketing. I'm sorry, um, that a couple of years ago, I signed up for this thing that they said, hey, I'll give you a free book or it was just like five bucks or something like that. But I think the first part was free. And I never thought about how that free book, I read just a framework of it. And then it just enticed me so much that I went to their website and I spent nine hundred and ninety seven dollars to learn what they were teaching at the That's time right. and it was just an extensive course on building platforms and then from 997 i actually ended up taking their next course which was a much more extensive course and it was a much more expensive things but now from that free book i'm almost two thousand dollars because i keep learning so much from the same individual who is an expert on their field and they believe so much in their content that they're paid hey, yeah i'll give you a book for free because i know i'm going to get more out of this and so that's right. I think that's a really phenomenal thought process, especially when it comes uh, at the beginning or the early stages of building a platform. You kind of have to build the trust with the audience that you're targeting. And if you're confident that the thing that you have is going to give them that next step or get them that much further, 
why not do it for free? Um, and even yeah. for some of us, when we first started writing our eBooks, we were doing something as simple as, hey, give what you pay, pay what you want type of things. You just give it, as, sow a seed, give it by donation. And it honestly, then we were able to, once people saw that it was delivered, that they can access it fast and easy, then said, hey, let's do an e-course on this. And then we did an e-course and now we have a university. And so there are so many steps that you can grow at the, at the such a fast and healthy cadence at the same time, because you're, you're learning customers, you're getting to understand who your target reader is. You're getting to understand, hey, this is working. Let's just keep growing and developing this more. And so I think that those are some valuable things that even if you're at the very beginning of building that platform for yourself, you know, there are so many uh, people now who are in a place of competition, especially on social media. And perhaps some of you may feel overwhelmed and say, how do I get this social media platform established? How do I get this social media platform going? I don't understand it. Did I tell you something that is so uh, interesting? My most uh, seen, whether it's a TikTok or YouTube videos, or even some of our best campaigns were the ones that we kept the most simple. There wasn't nothing fancy. It wasn't nothing crazy. It was just, hey, here's the video. We're going to share it two, three times. We're going to post it everywhere, and we're going to be consistent. I'm, I was talking with somebody who's trying to understand TikTok recently, and um, I'm not sure why I'm touching this, but maybe some of you are thinking about this, and they said, hey, my videos on TikTok just keep, like, they don't get a lot of views. And I said, the importance with every platform is to just keep showing up just keep showing one up. day right. one of your videos is going to pop one day one of your videos is going to just do well sure enough six weeks later after 27 videos and consistently being there uh, her first video went to 10,000 and 29,000 and now it's in that consistent range where now she's basically developed so much authority or had trusted those few viewers that TikTok recognizes that consistency and says hey we're going to push this person out it's the same thing with YouTube we're on YouTube now that every time that you start showing consistency and you start giving yourself that space, it goes so fast once it starts being promoted because now you want that you've shown the algorithm. So to say, I'm this person is being consistent. We're going to push them out. And it takes consistency. So you can't get discouraged um, when you have, you know, 200 views, 100 views, 80 views. Um, that's how it started with me. If you go to my TikTok page today, you're going to see that my views at the beginning was 200 uh, 400 and I've slowed down way than I was posting at the beginning, but then my first video did 10,000, 20,000, 29. And so it just keeps going um, because basically I just showed up every single day, whether I felt like it or not, but I believed that the word that God has given me was for somebody at that specific time. I was going to say something that was going to give hope to somebody. It was the word from God from, and, and I just felt, I knew that somebody was going to watch it eventually, and it was going to reach who it was supposed to reach. So don't be discouraged if you have... 20 friends, 100 friends on Facebook. If you got one person that shows up live to your YouTube channel, if you've got one person that shows up and tunes into your Facebook group and you're promoting something, um, all of us have started somewhere. I mean, we I never thought that I would be in the position to have challenges that we've done in the past to be in front of, you know, by the time that we're done, 15, 20,000 people. But because we kept being consistent and we eventually cracked the code on, if you want to call it that, how we can get in front of a lot of people and do things like that, it's possible for everybody. The internet is huge. And really just what we're doing is a small percentage of what we could uh, reach. So just be encouraged. I wanted to encourage some of you because I really feel that there is, um, especially when it comes to writing books, it can be such a intimidating subject for some people. And really, this is why this program is here, that regardless of how you feel, that you can publish your books, that you can finish your books, that you can begin with good determination, that you don't have to be uh, discouraged, that you don't have to feel inconsistent, uh, that you don't have to feel in a place of tiredness. You know, there are so much calamity and pain happening in the world there's nothing that could go wrong by you writing something that's going to provide hope for people that's going to give them that there is hate. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is peace on the other side of the storm, that there is a passion that you have something that God has given you a message and you've shared your, shared your story that, yeah, I went through this time of pain and I went through this time of trial, but you're going to overcome. And here's some of the things that you can do in this time of um, storm that is going to get you through, is going to get you to develop a greater stamina. And so if you're 
you're writing something today, I just want to um, just really declare over you that God is going to give you clarity, that God is going to give you just such great articulation. You know, again, I struggled with articulation my entire life. For me, words were not my forte. They were not my strength. But I know that you're watching this today and you are the author. God has given you a message and I don't want you to give up on your message. I don't want you to feel like you're failing. And I know I'm talking to some of you now that even you have said that you I don't want to write anymore because it's just too aggravating. You feel like you have all this content and perhaps there is a picture that there's a, a wind that comes when you're walking out of the place and all of your papers go everywhere. And that's how you feel. But in this time and through this workshop, it is just a small uh, part of your journey as an author that God is going to really guide you through, that God's going to help you to write your books. You know, one of the greatest things that I love about prophesying to people People is that I'm partnering with the Holy Spirit to know about their life. And so this is the same thing with the book. When you're part, when you're writing your book, you're partnering with the Holy Spirit to write the book right. that is going to impact the life of people. And so I really want to encourage you guys that this is something that's going to be greater, um, that is just not going to be about us. It's not just going to be about the story that God gave you, but you're essentially representing a galore of people that are sharing your pain. They're sharing your process and you can be the hero of that person by going to the front and saying, Hey, this is how we can overcome. You know, there are so many people that can relate to my story that we had a great family at the beginning and then trials came and the things that happened between our family. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, God then has given me this message that I believe is to really just be a strong family above all things and represent God well in that area. And so my greatest passion, my picture of success is not writing a book, it's not being on a speaker, on a platform or on a flyer, but it's really developing and growing a healthy family. Because if I don't have anything for the next generation, what is the point of me doing it today? If I can't leave something that's going to continue to speak when I'm not here, there's no sense in doing it. So your book, even when you're gone, is going to cast out devils. Your book, even when you're gone, is going to influence people. Even when you're gone and you've gone to be with the Lord, or perhaps uh, you're not able to have the energy to be a speaker, but your book is going to continue to help people with dreams, uh, with revelation with your pain with your trauma whatever your story might be whatever your revelation might be your book will continue to talk while you're not able to talk anymore and so i really want to encourage you that even now that god's going to give you an impartation and just give you such a grace to really be able to believe God that the book that God has given you is not for you, but is for generations. And even after you're gone, your book will continue to talk when you can't. And so I want to encourage you guys, even in this time, I know we made this available yesterday, but continue to, <coughs> to go to publishthebooks.com. It's a significant cost for us for just a really a lot of revelation and content. And what we're discussing now is really just a small portion of what's inside of the e the e-courses and what's inside of this community because you're going to be able to just get um, some different trainings and teachings on who who this who how to write the book how to publish the book how to prepare to write and all of the different things that we've covered in the last three days we're going to develop it in much depth inside of the e-course how to partner uh, with the editor how to find your editor how to get the attention of a publisher there are so many things that are inside of this e-course. Um, and again, I want you to uh, go to publishthebooks.com and really be a part of this. Again, it's a significant cost. I've attached the link inside of YouTube. You can join and be a part there. You know, $175 or uh, two payments of 99 And again, you get all the bonuses of the that we mentioned last night. And it really is going to just drive something inside of you. You know, this is not a lot. Uh, we spend more money probably by going out to eat with a group of people. And it's a small sacrifice that if you make it today, that if you make that sacrifice now, it can carry you for such a long time. And let me say this, I wish that this was available, you know, several years ago for me when I was trying to define my place in the writing sphere, or how really how to even find my cadence, my voice as a writer or an author or whatever you want to call it in that area that you're in. But I was trying to discover who I was in that. That's what you're going to discover inside of this e-course. You're going to discover not just what, how to do it, but you're going to discover the what. What is the thing that it helps me to really articulate? You're going to find your voice as an author. And I really want to encourage you to go there. Uh, it's just, again, a small cost. Uh, Marcos, is there anything that you want to share in specifics to the course? 
Um, let me just say this. You know, if you have a laptop and an internet connection, you can do this. Okay, this is not like you don't have to have some other massive requirement. If you have a story, right? If you have a message, if you have a laptop, and if you have an internet connection, those are the requirements. You know, so you can do this. This is, and I just want to echo what uh, Rodrigo was just speaking over you that that this is within your reach. Okay, there's there. I love the quote that a friend of mine said the other day. He says, "A drop of water can break a rock. All it needs yes. is three things." consistency location and time if a drop of water has consistency in the same location over time it will break a rock and it's the same thing when it comes to writing a book if you've got consistency location and time if you come back to that place where you're just starting small don't overwhelm yourself don't overthink this don't don't make it seem like oh my gosh this is just too big of a mountain no, start small. We talked about some of the steps you could take yesterday. The course walks you through a lot more detail. It, it'll give you a lot more insight on different things. Um, it'll help you to really understand a little bit more about the target reader and some of these other things we were talking about, how to shape your message, how to approach your book. I mean, there's just a lot of really good information that the course unpacks a little bit further. We wanted to give you a little bit of a taste yesterday and today on what some of those things are. Um, and so those are the, some of the things that you can expect. But again, I just wanted to just try to assage any concerns that are out there. Like, man, this is just overwhelming or gosh, yes. I, I, it's like, I want to, but I don't want to, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to take the first step. Well, we'll help you walk through those steps. That's part of the reason why we put this course together is to make you go from an idea to hopefully a bestseller. So um, really hope that it blesses each and every one of you that are out there. I really encourage you to take the time. If you've got a dream, if you've got a vision, if you've got a calling to have a message, get out your story. Your, I mean, it's your legacy when you're gone. Who else is going to be out there that knows, you know, what I heard the other day, most people don't know their grandparents' first name. Do you realize that? Wow. Most The, av the average person <laughs> doesn't know their grandparents' first name. I know what my grandmother was called, but I had to yeah. sit there and think like, wait, what was her first name? And I remembered what it was, but like, it took me a second. And that's because I have a pretty decent relationship with my family. You know right. what I mean? But like, but, but the average person doesn't know the first name, the first legal name of uh, at least one of their grandparents. I, I say that as a word picture because if if you don't know the first name of one of your grandparents, what else do you not know? You know what I mean? Like think about right. all the other aspects of their story that you don't know. And so in the same respect, eventually you're going to be a grandparent. Eventually you're going to be gone. Eventually there's going to be a legacy left behind of some sort, right? Whether you like it or not. And so leave a powerful legacy, if anything, through a book. You know, and that's a way that you can impact future generations that may otherwise not even remember your first name at some point. And so you want to just make sure that you're doing everything that you can to leave a lasting legacy with your message uh, for if anybody for your loved ones. Right. But for the future generations. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I, I, I want to clarify also for the e-course, because this may be a question that may come up, it's self-paced. It's not going to be like, hey, if you if you miss week one, week two, week three, it's not going to be like something that you're like oh, out of it. This is a course that once you have access to it, it's on demand. You can take it at your own um, and cadence and walk through it whenever you have time. But it's definitely going to give you a lot of insight. Um, and again, this is going to be available um, for the next couple of days, but really some of the bonuses will fall off tonight. So I don't want you to miss out on, on those. I do want you to be able to get them. So make the sacrifice uh, to be a part of it as a small uh, charge and just get ready to go on this journey that is going to grow, is going to excel you, is going to accelerate you and really uh, challenge you um, as an author and really help you to think outside the box of the norm. So um, I just want to believe God with you that you're going to really uh, learn more, that you're going to develop more and understand about who you are. And remember, um, when you're thinking about the book uh, that you're going to write, that you're essentially birthing it out of a book because the Bible is what inspired you to do this. So you're the books of books. You have the author of all books in your hand. And if you want to find the way, he'll show it to you. So I'm so encouraged by this. Again, God, thank you so much for joining us. It has been so great. Go to publishthebooks.com. It's going to be an, a great help for you. I've uh, added the links into the comment section in YouTube and Facebook. So I'll be, we'll be more than happy to be there and see you soon. God bless you guys. Anything in closing, Marcos? Oh, you share your, uh, if you're actually, 
one more thing. If you're already an author and you have a complete book and you're looking for a place where you can um, perhaps publish your book or edit it, uh, Mark has got some services available if you want to share some of where they can go. Oh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Rodrigo. So I'm the CEO of Harp and Sword Media, Harp and Sword Media. Um, a lot of people are intrigued by the name. The name is really a kind of a symbolic of uh, sort of the Davidic anointing, you know, the Davidic um, uh, story. Uh, and it kind of symbolizes this whole idea of using our strength as our weapon, um, much like how David used his worship uh, as a weapon. So that's where the name, that, in case you're wondering, that was the inspiration for Harp and Sword Media. But harpandswordmedia.com is where you can find um, our company's information. And we offer a wide range of publishing services, but really end-to-end -end book publishing, everything from editing, uh, ghostwriting, uh, all the way through to uh, designing a book cover and an interior typeset, getting it published and distributed for you. Uh, so we can offer all those things. and We'd be happy to, uh, to be of service to any uh, authors that are here watching. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go, guys. We'll also send the information via email uh, at the end of this. Uh, so we're grateful for you. Again, thank you for your time. And for all of you signed up, you're going to be up or you're watching the replay. We love you and we'll see you guys next time.